Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. One issue always on developers' minds with a game like Age of Empires 2 is you don't want to make any civilization too strong. Players are incredibly sensitive to perceived power creep and unfairness, but for this video I thought it'd be a fun challenge to flip that around and intentionally build the strongest AoE 2 civilization that I possibly can. Not by giving Cobra cars as a unique unit or anything like that, but instead by combining elements from existing civilizations. That means picking a tech tree from an existing civilization, mixing and matching up to a maximum of 5 civ bonuses that already exist, picking an existing unique unit, a castle and imperial age tech, and finally a team bonus, all with the goal of creating the ultimate overpowered civ. Of course, depending on what kind of civilization you want, whether archer, cavalry, etc., you get a very different result, so I'll be offering a few different builds based on different strategies. I think I've put together a few really broken civilizations, so let's check them out. We'll start things off with the ultimate archer civilization. In picking a tech tree, a civ like Britain's would of course be a terrible choice on account of missing thumbring, so instead I'm going to be going with the Mayans. That doesn't mean we're taking all of the Mayans bonuses, but we are going to take their archer range options. I don't really care about the hand cannoneer or cavalry archer here because this is going to be about going all in with the crossbow line, and I don't want anyone playing the civ to get distracted with those other units. Likewise, the rest of the tech tree isn't important because we're going to be making the archers so good you don't even want to bother with anything else. Jumping into their Civ bonuses, the first is going to be the Mayans Archer Discount. It is only a 10% cost reduction in Feudal, but in the Imperial Age, those 30% cheaper Archers are going to save a ton of resources in the long run. Following it up, we're going to have the Britons bonus for extra range on their Foot Archers. Now again, this doesn't really help in Feudal Age, but is more about the long game, giving a big power spike in Castle and Imperial. This bonus alone guarantees we'll be outranging every other Archer Civ except for the Britons. The third bonus is going to be the Ethiopians for faster firing archers. This one's great in all situations, taking out villagers, fighting other archers, taking out groups of knights, it's pretty self explanatory why more damage is always something you want. Next I wanted to go with some sort of eco bonus, especially something that would help out early on, so I'm going to add the Celts 15% faster lumberjacks. Arguably it's not the best eco bonus out there, but for this one it's more about just putting things together that are going to synergize well, and you'll see later why I prefer this to other bonuses that might be regarded as stronger. After this, I really wanted to keep it to just 5 bonuses as that's a pretty standard number, but this one was pretty tough. I thought about the Sicilians taking 50% less bonus damage as that would help a lot against skirmishers, but there's also the Vietnamese 20% extra HP, which I like for making surviving mangonel shots a bit easier. There's also the Koreans getting the blacksmith defense upgrades for free. All of these felt really defensively oriented though, and I wanted something that was a bit more damage focused. I ended up going with the Tatar's hill bonus, just to make our archers and crossbows a bit deadlier. Camping a hill with this bonus, all of the extra range, and the extra firing rate altogether felt really strong. Now if there was a bonus for faster moving archers though, I probably would have picked that, but we have to work with what we have. For the unique unit, I'm going to go with the plumed archer. The crossbow line should already be good enough that you don't need it, but I just like that the plume archer adds a bit of speed as an option, and it should theoretically pick up the boost from the extra range and faster firing bonus as well. For a castle age unique tech, there are a ton of good ones to pick from. There's the Britons yeoman giving plus one range to their foot archers, though I do find it's a bit pricey. There's also the Italians pavis giving more armor, and technically we could maybe slide mines obsidian arrows in here. Ultimately though, I decided to go with the Persians commander on, so their archer line is converted to only costing wood. This is partly why I ended up going with the Celt Lumberjack bonus as well, as long term that's going to end up being the only resource we need. For the Imperial Age unique tech, there's actually not a lot of great options for archers out there. I toyed with the idea of Supremacy or Flemish Revolution in case we get raided by a lot of cavalry, but it felt a bit random. In the end, I decided to push the rules a bit and I'm adding Obsidian Arrows. It's not technically available at the moment, but it was up till about a month ago, so I'm going to count it. The plus 6 attack against buildings is going to be incredibly important if we're foregoing siege entirely and going all in with archers. Finally, for the team bonus, this was again a tough one. Britons stand out as an obvious one with the 20% faster archery ranges, but there are some other good options. The Magyars plus 2 line of sight on archers and Vietnamese imperial skirmishers as a status symbol both crossed my mind. Instead though, I'm going to go with the Saracens plus 2 for archers against buildings. 
Again, it comes down to if we're not going to use Siege, we really need the archers to do a lot of damage there. To get a sense of how the Civ would actually play through different ages, starting in the Dark Age, obviously you have the Lumberjack bonus to help you out, and it would make it a bit easier to put down a couple of archery ranges in early Feudal. You have a small archer discount, plus the wood gather bonus at that point, helping you massive archers. Plus, they're faster firing, and your team bonus is going to help you get through palisade walls more quickly. At this point, though, arguably they're not completely overpowering. Once you're in Castle Age, though, your archer discount increases, and they get an immediate plus one range. After Bodkin Arrow, that means they'll outrange Mangonels and Elite Skirmishers. In late Castle Age, after you build a castle, you could then get Commander on, so your archers only cost wood, which the mine bonus also discounts. I think that plays really nicely into your Lumberjack bonus as well, and you only really need a handful of farms at that point for techs and villagers, while at the same time just keep pumping out extremely cheap, fast-firing, long-range crossbows. In Imperial Age, you get another plus one on the range, and the discount increases, so each archer just costs 42 wood and no gold. Bringing back Obsidian Arrows and stacking with the Saracen team bonus is just the nail in the coffin, turning your massive unbeatable archer army into one that's remarkably good at shredding buildings. Overall, they're maybe a bit weak in the early game, and the Tatar Hill bonus could be swapped out for an eco bonus if you want them to be a bit faster out of the gate, but I'm pretty happy with the final payoff in Imperial. You'll notice in the background, I actually created the sieve using triggers and tested it out. Some bonuses are easier than others to replicate though. To give them Ethiopian faster firing archers, for example, you can modify the attack reload time, though unfortunately the game can't handle decimals. You have to be a little clever and multiply the attack rate by 85 and create another trigger to divide it by 100. That gives you a 15% shorter reload time, which turns into the 18% faster firing Ethiopian bonus. Overall, 256 times mod might give results that are a bit more shocking, but this is still an insanely overpowered sieve. So with the archers done, now let's try to make the most powerful cavalry sieve possible. I decided I want to design this one around going scouts into knights and finally paladins. To start off with the basic tech tree, I decided to go with the Spanish. I don't even want camels or step lancers here as a distraction, or something you could misclick by mistake. We also really don't want to go with Franks here because, of course, they don't have bloodlines. They have a Civ bonus instead that does something similar, but by doing it this way, we get bloodlines and that bonus. In fact, that's actually going to be our first Civ bonus. The 20% HP boost means our scouts will beat any other Civs head-to-head, -head, and is also going to stack with bloodlines for amazing knights and paladins later. Now, an early food bonus is really important for scouts, and there are a lot of bonuses like that to pick from. I first considered the Mongols hunting bonus as they're well known for scouts, but instead I'm going to go with the Lithuanians plus 150 food at the start of the game. It's simple and consistent. With pushing deer or certain maps, maybe you get more food out of the Mongols bonus, but I like the food up front a bit more. Unfortunately, that only really helps in Dark Age, so for the next bonus I want to do something a bit longer lasting in Feudal and ideally into Castle Age. I considered Khmer not needing prerequisite buildings to save on the barracks going up, or Huns not needing houses, which has a longer term but larger payoff. Instead though, I'm going to give them the Vikings free wheelbarrow and handcart bonus. Wheelbarrow primarily helps with farming and is enough to make Vikings a decent night sieve even without bloodlines. I think it's reasonable to call it one of if not the strongest eco bonus in the game, and it happens to primarily benefit the resource that's most important for scouts and advancing quickly to castle age. For the fourth bonus, I thought about Burgundian Stable Techs being 50% off, which saves a lot toward Cavalier and Paladin, Magyar's cheaper scout line, and the Portuguese gold discount. I was looking for another bonus that would somehow help spam a lot of units. I ended up going with the Berber's Cavalry discount. Long term, I like that it's going to save us a lot of gold, and it's also going to make it a lot easier to build up overwhelming numbers in Castle Age. At this point, that's basically four eco bonuses though, so to finish off, I wanted some sort of stat buff. Some good ones would be the Lithuanians plus one attack on knights per relic, Turks plus one pierce armor on scouts, the Magyars free attack upgrades, or Teuton's extra melee armor. None of them really felt like they helped both scouts and paladins though, until I remembered the Sicilians negating 50% of bonus damage. If you're going all in with cavalry, you're going to run into a lot of pikes, so this bonus should help a ton with that. For the unique unit, I figured you probably don't need one, but I threw in the lightest just for the melee armor negation, just in case you come across some Teutonic knights. For the Castle Age Unique Tech, I gave them Chivalry for 40% faster working stables. This affects research time for the Paladin as well, which means they're going to come in even sooner. For the Imperial Age Unique Tech, there were actually several good ones to pick from. The ones that jumped out to me were Burmese Manipur Cavalry giving plus 6 against buildings, and also Bulgarian Stirrups if we want to move it up from Castle Age, which increases the Light Cavalry and Night Lines attack rates by 33%, but instead I'm going to go with Faremba for plus 5 Cavalry attack. That should end up being reasonably similar to stirrups, but helps more against high melee armor. Unfortunately, it is a bit of an expensive tech, but we should have a good enough economy for it. Finally, for their team bonus, there are a ton of great ones to pick from. 
The ones that jump out to me are Mongols extra line of sight on scouts, Persian knights having plus two against archers, Huns 20% faster working stables, and Franks plus two line of sight on knights. Personally, I love the Mongols line of sight bonus and it's probably my favorite team bonus for scouting and raiding. But after we make some beastly knights, I don't wanna give them away to conversions. The way it stands now, you can't really counter our knights with the pike line, so I think we'll run into a lot of monks. For that reason, I'm going with the Teuton's conversion resistance to put a stop to that, or at least give our knights a fighting chance. Thinking about how playing the Civ would actually feel, you have a really nice Dark Age with the 150 extra food. There's no stress about sustaining villagers or worrying about having enough food to click up. The initial scout rush gets out to a great start because of that, backed up by more HP, especially after bloodlines, which remember we have. On top of that, our scouts are only taking half damage from spearmen. Just looking at 74 HP on feudal scouts is pretty scary, and you could commit fully to feudal with those stats and probably do just fine. On the other hand, better farms with wheelbarrow keeps things moving along, so we can quickly reach the castle age. Once there, you switch over to knights with 140 HP, a 15% discount on their cost, while taking half damage from their counter units, all topped off with resistance to conversion. It's hard to think of what exactly you would do against this sieve, and they even have a great economy backing it up, so production isn't an issue either. Finally, in Imperial Age with Chivalry Research, you can fly through Cavalier and Paladin upgrades, which then have 212 HP, a 20% discount, plus 9 attack, that's one more than a Lithuanian Paladin with 4 relics, all while negating half of a Halberdier's bonus damage and resisting conversions. The stats could easily be beefed up a bit more by substituting one of the eco bonuses or chivalry for something stat related, but in this case I think building a really strong economy is the best way to go. And finally, the last one to round out the trifecta is an infantry sieve. The goal for this one was to make a sieve where it was viable to go militia into longswords and champions, just spamming the swordsman line for the entire game. Now I know what you're saying, that sieve already exists, but let's see if we can make them a bit better. For starters, the tech tree I'm going with is the Incas, mostly for variety. Obviously, for Civ bonuses, we're going to start with the Goths discount and the Japanese faster attack rate. These two are the best infantry bonuses in my opinion, and we're going to need both. For the third bonus, I went with the Malians extra pierce armor on their barracks units. I like this because it addresses their weakness to archers, and so far all three bonuses will apply to all barracks units, meaning we're going to give it to Eagle Warriors and the Spear line as well. For the fourth Civ bonus though, I really am going to push the Swordsman line, so I'm going with the Bulgarians militia line upgrades for free. This is great for getting men at arms instantly when we reach feudal, but it's probably even better in Imperial Age. Normally Bulgarians don't have access to champion, but the tech tree I picked does, so the bonus saves us having to get the champion upgrade. The fifth and final bonus is a really tough one. There's Burmese extra attack, Vikings HP, and Celt speed, but the fact our only eco bonus at this point is the Goss discount had me a bit nervous. I decide to throw in the Vikings free wheelbarrow and handcart again, just so you're able to spam from two barracks in Feudal Age and eventually save up for castle. Wheelbarrow is basically a 13-15% to 15 boost in farming, plus it puts you three villagers ahead of someone who has to research it, so it's a big deal. I really wanted to include the Celt speed bonus and see it stacked on top of Squires, but just didn't have room for it. Next, for the unique unit, I gave them the Haskarl, just so that they have something good against archers. They should already have very good eagle warriors, but it's just another option. For the Castle Age unique tech, there's actually a couple of very reasonable choices. I thought about Viking Chieftains giving infantry extra attack against cavalry, and Anarchy would also be a good one here if you wanted to make a really Haskarl based civilization. Instead, I ended up going with Perfusion for 100% faster barracks. For the Imperial Age unique tech, I never realized how many great infantry techs there really are to pick from. First of all, there's Force Levy, removing the gold cost of the Swordsman line, El Dorado if we wanted to double down on Eagle Warriors, and Garland Wars for plus 4 attack. It was a tough choice, but I ended up going with the Bulgarian's unique tech Begains for plus 5 melee armor on the Swordsman line. Combined with the Malian Pierce armor bonus we already have, our champions are going to be insane, and we'll take a look at their stats in a second. Finishing things off with the team bonus, I initially thought about giving them the Italian Condottiero as a way to handle gunpowder, but the Goths faster working barracks helps a lot earlier, and I think makes more sense. In terms of actually playing them, one issue with the Civ is their Dark Age really isn't all that special. In fact, it's really just a slightly weaker version of the Goths. I considered trying to squeeze in the bonus for free loom or plus 50 gold instead of free wheelbarrow, but I think the long term payoff is better as it is. Once you reach Feudal Age, Man at Arms comes in instantly along with one Pierce Armor and faster attack, which altogether is a massive power spike. The Goth discount plus wheelbarrow means it's easy to keep creating Man at Arms from two barracks right away, and going full long swordsman would be a completely viable strategy. Where things get really crazy though is in the Imperial Age. Just look at the armor on their champions. They're almost a Teutonic Knight and Haskarl put together, while costing 29 food and 13 gold. 
That's 10 food less than goth champions are normally, because I was thinking ahead and picked a tech tree with supplies. Their attack stat admittedly doesn't look great on paper, but remember they're attacking 33% faster, which is roughly equivalent to Garland Moore's plus 4 attack depending on the enemy's armor. In addition to being cheap and overpowered, they're also very quickly replaced thanks to your faster working barracks. This would be a very difficult unit to fight against, and you might try hand cannoneers or mass scorpions, but good luck with that. So those are my three overpowered broken sieve designs. Hopefully it was an interesting thought experiment for you guys as well, and it's cool to challenge myself with where I personally rank bonuses and techs against each other. It was fun to try to think of ways to make them synergize and become more than the sum of their parts. Feel free to pick a strategy and give me your OP Civ design in the comments. If it's good, I might even steal it for the next video. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.